am Susan and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you all the wonderful things you can do with this Sculpey mold. I found it at Michael's, my local craft store. Any of the polymer clay suppliers all have these. They're very popular. They have different lace ones, but this one was my favorite. As you'll see, I've created lots of stuff with this. So let's get started. It was just such a neat piece because you use this with liquid clay. Now it comes with this little scraper that you can put the clay in into the grooves and it, I have tried heating this up to 200 degrees before I put the liquid clay in it didn't make a darn bit of difference so I just wanted to share that with you because I felt like it was a waste of my time I also found this scraper to be too large I prefer just a gift card I thought that was a lot easier to work with this kind of made it sloop all over the sides and get kind of messy with a gift card was just a little smaller, it was like half the size, so it gave me a lot more control. Now, I put mine on a tile. This is my old Brody baking tile. It's been with me for a long time and it does the job perfectly. I'm using the Gold Liquid Sculpey. You can use any liquid clay with this. You can even take the clear liquid clay and add, you can add mica powder to it, you can add alcohol inks to it, you can dye it yourself. I prefer to personally just buy the colors already done just because I really like the gold and I think it would probably be more money for me to take my mica powder and mix it with this than to just buy the gold liquid clay. I think it was four dollars for the bottle. And so it's cheaper for me than the, using up all my mica powder. Now mine has gotten thicker since I've had it, probably because I'm in Florida and it's been extremely warm here. And I'm just placing it over the little spots. Now I'm just going to take my gift card, and I've cut this gift card, in, actually it's an old credit card, and I've cut it in half just because that's all I need. I just find it easier to manage, and I'm just pushing it into those crevices. Sometimes I get too much, so I, I don't want to put too much on. It's easier to add more. You don't have to fill in all these designs. I just find that I'm making a pair of earrings and I don't have two of each of these and I need two. So I'm filling them all in. And they're neat little embellishments as you'll see after they bake. Here we have a little bit over there and a little here. But don't waste a dab of this clay. It's liquid clay, you can use it for anything. It's just got some mica powder with it. So you could paint with this clay. You can do lots of neat things with colored clay. Now I'm just taking my card and then scraping it off back into the bottle. And cleaning this up, you wanna make sure you get all of this as clean as possible. So now you can see it's nice and even. I have everything filled in so that you can see there's no air bubbles or spots. And if you want to let it sit for a few minutes before you bake it, that helps also. Now I'll just go bake this at 275 for about 10 minutes as they recommend. And if it's not fully cured, it doesn't matter because I will be fully curing this when I put it on another piece of clay and bake it then. Now when you take this out of the oven, it peels off really easy. Just bend it back. It's pretty similar to the gold clay. The colors are pretty true to the colors in the packages, just to give you an idea when you're looking at them, because in the bottle, that's the gold. So you really can't tell what color it's going to be. Now, it gives you this almost like a thick doily piece. I just want to change the background so that I can show you what they look like. Now, here you can see I have these little pieces and they kind of just break right off. You don't really have to do much to them. I tried cutting them with a scissor the first time and then I realized it was just easier to just pull them off. They kind of come off like almost a feather. They're just little bit of strays and I don't get it on all of them, just certain ones. But the little ones, you just basically bend it and they pop right out. Just from one quick pass, you can see you get a really nice assortment and look at how beautiful these look on red with the gold. They're really elegant and you can do so much with these. Now before I take this and do another set, I will take this and run this under a sink and just take my finger and this will, all this little film will come off. And all I did was just run it under some warm water and rub my finger on it. It came right off. It's almost like a dusty powder of flakes. Now this liquid clay comes in assorted colors. I bought all the colors I could find just to give you an idea of what they look like 
once you put them out. Now you can mix these colors together. The one dilemma I did have is which bottle do you put the mixed colors in that you scraped off? So you may want to get an extra jar or something for that. But I just used them solid because I thought they were really pretty solid. This is the navy blue metallic. This is the pearl. This one I think looks more like, most like a doily. Gives you that really lacy effect with that pearl white. This is the garnet metallic, which is like a cherry red. I like to hold them up just so you can get a better idea of the color. It's really not a darker color. It's, it's really a deep pink kind of a red. Here is the gold, and I ended up using up all the gold, so this is all I have left. This one was my favorite. If I could only buy one, I would say the gold was the one that I could do the most with. Here is your traditional black. And I like the black clay because there's lots of neat things you could do with black. It was very goth, gave you a nice black lace. And this one is the peacock pearl, which is the same as the peacock pearl clay. It's like a turquoise with a little bit of sparkle to it. Very pretty. So I'm starting off with this little peacock doily and I'm using translucent clay and I want to coat the entire back with translucent clay. Now you can use the peacock clay, but as you can see, it sort of spreads to the top and I don't want the peacock color on my other clay. So I prefer to use the clear or translucent just so you won't see it and make sure it is totally covered. Your fingers will get a little goopy, but it wipes off. If you don't have this on, it won't really stick to the clay and this is kind of fiddly to get it into the clay. So I'm just burnishing it into the clay a bit with my fingers. And you can use any kind of cutter that you have with these. I have this little swirl shape cutter and I just thought it'd be kind of fun to use this. Now, you can get that little edge in there that looks like lace or you could have that solid piece that looks like lace. I kind of like the edge in there. I think it gives it more of an interest. So I'm going to do the edge part. Now for this, I find it easier to take a block and press it down. So you can cut a bead like this that you could use in your bead embroidery. I think two of these would be really pretty on each side of a bead embroidered piece. So I'm going to do this other piece with this other side hanging over. I just think that would be kind of pretty. Just putting them on your clay and cutting them out with a cutter is the easiest way. Now the other thing you can do with these is make a pendant. I love hearts so I'm going to use the heart and this way I get to use most of whatever is left here. I try to use as much of these little doily pieces as I can. I want to show you you can make them without using the circular piece. So just press real hard. And you can see I've got that beautiful little lace piece there. So you can see this side is a little bent from the way I cut it. I'm just going to push this in a little and give that edge. It kind of has a beveled cut on that side because of the way the lace bent it, but it's okay. I just want to flatten it down on my tile, make sure it lays all even. The same thing with these two pieces because I wouldn't want them to be all bent and distorted once they're baked. This lace is beautiful, but you've got to play with it a bit. So I'll bake these about 10 minutes just so they stiffen up. This is not the permanent 30 minutes that not, I normally will give them. I just do that just to get them to stiffen up. They'll be easier to work with, so I'll be right back. Now you are left with these little specks of lace stuck in your clay, and these are just bits that I really don't find much of a use for. I just throw these out. They're very minuscule little amounts. So you can just then, once you get all of that lace out of the clay, use this clay over and over again. From the magic of YouTube, these are all baked and hard. And I'm just going to do this one on camera because I don't want to make this video forever. This is obviously the same technique and I'll use these in beading someplace. I don't like the way this kind of breaks off the lace into the clay. I like the way it looks better finished like this. So let me show you how I do it. It's very simple. Now here I just have a piece of wax paper and a piece of clay and I'm going to put the good side down and I have our heart that I'm going to cover in the back. I always use liquid clay and once again I'm using the translucent. I try to save the color for making the doilies and doing specialty things with just adhering clay together. I just use the translucent at all times. So now I'm just putting it right down on there and I'm just going to roughly cut around this. 
And this is why I like having it on the paper because it's just easier to turn it. And this did distort a little bit on the side over here. You can see it. I put that lace doily in there, but don't worry about it because you won't notice it once we get it covered up here. Now cutting this is going to be tricky and take you some time. Where it's nice and clean on this one side, it'll be easy, but the lace side can be very, very fiddly. So just realize it's going to take some time and just push it in all around. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles in the back also. You can see them usually if you have an air bubble. Now normally I like to put a stamp on this before I put it on. I find with this one it's easier to put a stamp design on it later because I find it just breaks too much around these edges with the lace. And if you make it thicker it's even harder to cut the lace, cut it away with the lace. But now I'm just going to trim this up closer. But if you notice, I'm picking the clay up away from the piece where the lace is because it will have a tendency to stick in all those little crevices and be very difficult to get out. So it's just easier to pull it up and away as you're working. Now you're not going to get all of it out. Don't beat yourself up. Some things are just not worth it. But just take your time trimming around the lace. Now you know I've got this sped up so I make it look a lot faster. And I just like to smooth that edge out. I don't like that rough edge where I've cut it. And right at the top of my heart here I like to push that in so that I have that pretty point. And you can always go back and retrim. And sometimes I do this five and six times. If you want you can leave it smooth like this. I like to scallop it. I like the way it looks with the lace, that little scalloped edge. That's totally up to you. If you do want the scalloped edge, all you do is take your needle tool and just do a few little indents all around. And if it gets over the edge there, like it did right there, just go back with your X-Acto knife and clean that up. It's a constant back and forth with this piece. The lace gets very fiddly in here. Now I've shown how I do these roses in other videos, but I'll show you real quick again. It's a very simple technique. I have a little tray. I found this as a gift card container that I had purchased a bunch of these. I think they were like 10 cents after Christmas and I never knew what I was gonna do with them. Well, they're perfect for holding all my little clay. I was trying it with the little clear view pages and they kept falling out, but I found these tins have a lid on them. So they're just perfect. Take those little scraps and they all go in. Now I'm going to do the flowers the same as I did here to give you an idea. So I'm going to put some liquid clay all around that area so I make sure I don't have to worry about anything not sticking. And I just roll it out into a snake. It doesn't have to be any particular size or shape. It just has to be so that I can cut little pieces from it that are pretty close to size. So I always take that end piece, put it at the end there. And here I've got I need about five or six leaves. For my leaves, I just take that little wedge and I roll it into a ball and pinch it like a teardrop and then flatten it a bit. And I take my needle tool and I just go down the middle and add all my little veins on the sides. I'll just quickly add all of these little leaves, repeating the exact same process as I go. Once again, I'm making a snake, and this time I want them small, so I just make my snake smaller. So I only need one little end smaller, and I just want these spiky little bits. So I just cut, so they're equally the same size, but they're not exact. These don't need to be exact, just easier to have something to measure. And I'm just putting these little bits in between here. This one you can see I've squished them down so they have a little bit more dimension. And here I need to squish them down so two things it does. It gives them a little more dimension and it bonds them with that clay. Because if they were just sitting up on top here they probably wouldn't bond and they may break off. So just blending them in. And you can do it in several spots. They don't have to be exact. They're from nature. Nothing's the same in nature. So now you can see how I've got that all blended out. I like this rose color. And I just want it a little bit lighter, so I'm going to add some pearl to that. 
So I'll take half of it. This is a pea-sized nugget. And I'll take another pea-sized nugget and mix them together till I get the color I want. Now I've got that all mixed up and I'm just going to cut it into three larger pieces. So I'll get three different size roses. Now the larger you do them, the larger the rose. So if you want them a little bit bigger, make them a little bit bigger. Let's go a little bit bigger. It might be easier for you to see. So I'm just going to roll this into a snake. One end a little thinner, one end a little thicker. And I'm just going to press it on this paper. Now this is just some wax paper, but regular typing paper, junk mail will work just as well. And now I'm just going to take it and roll it. Don't worry if it's not perfect. See how tiny that is? So we've got our first one on the clay there. So there's not a lot of sculpting involved here. So it's one end is a little thinner, the other end is a little thicker. And the paper allows it to come thinner. If you tried to do that on your fingers when you're working this small, it's kind of awkward. How tiny my little rose is. And it's that tininess that makes it look so detailed. So it's easier to just roll it on the paper too. Now I spread the petals out with my needle tool. And as I'm spreading them out, I'm pulling them apart. And they might not come apart perfectly, don't worry about it. This clay is really wet so it's really stuck. You can break up the petals with your needle tool and make it look much more like a rose just by how you open it. See the difference there? And now you can see how I opened them up and that was not very difficult. I'm just going to take one of these little pieces that I've made too small for roses to show you because you can see how small they are already. And I'm just going to cut this into little chunks. And these are gonna be our buds. However many you want, that's how many you cut. So I just roll it in my hand. As you can see, it's the size of a poppy seed. It's almost the color of my nail polish. Not a good choice, probably. And I'm just going to put those in there as little bud sprays. And they don't have to be on any particular spot. I like the way that looks, just enough there. So now I take my needle tool and I just blend these back. Just push them into the clay there. Gives them a lot more dimension and I don't have to worry about them falling off. Your little heart with some roses on it. Doesn't have to be that white pearl, here's the gold one. So just switching up the colors gives you a whole different look. Now I will bake this on a piece of fabric just underneath it so that it doesn't get a shiny spot on the back and then it'll be all perfect. Now here is just a black piece of clay with the white pearl on it using the exact same technique and I left it plain. I thought this was just pretty the way it was so you don't have to necessarily center your doily. And here's a pair of earrings I've created using that exact same technique and putting red roses on them. So I just wanted to show you without adding a whole lot. I've added a few little rhinestones on them just because I could. And here's a dangle pair of earrings where I've used a Skinner blend in the back and some flowers on top. So you could use them with the blends, the color blends in the back of them. You don't necessarily have to use solids, but I personally wouldn't want to mix my clay up for the doily. I'd rather put the Skinner blend in the back to give that unusual type of a look. I've also done these in pink and I've used some pink rhinestones around them. Now in order to get the rhinestones in the clay, I put the flowers on before I baked this and put the rhinestones in it and then I put the backing on it after I was finished baking it. And here's a pair of earrings using the black lace so you can get a nice contrast with it. I tried not to use too many rhinestones and crystals on these. I wanted to show you what you could get using just clay for a few pieces just because not everybody has all of those tools. And these have just a little post back that I've buried into them. And here's the red ones, just with some gold leaf on the background. Now I put some clear resin on top of these because of the gold leaf, it needed to be covered. 
but you can see what a beautiful iridescence you get with the gold leaf and how it doesn't really look like a doily anymore. And here I used the whole doily. I just wanted the larger one as a centerpiece. I really wanted a striking piece to a necklace. And let me hold it up closer so you can get a better idea. I've used my shibori beads with some crystals. If I show that to you side, you can see how they complement it really nice. And I've used some mint green clay. This matches the earrings I've shown you. And you can see how you can get quite an effect with this type of a doily background. It's quite beautiful. This is with the pearl clay. And I've put some pink rhinestones in here just to show you how you can really gussy this up and make it look spectacular. Now here I have just a rounded cross that's created out of that same gold doily with some white clay. Now I've got my piece all baked and so now it's hard. Now you can back it at this point or you can leave it plain or you can just do this technique and then back it. I prefer to do this technique and then back it. I'm starting out with some acrylic paints here and these are like the real inexpensive craft smart paints. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you have around will do the trick. And I'm just taking a brush and adding a lot of water to these and just dabbing it on randomly. Now you can do different sections. You can plan this out. I'm gonna do different sections just because I can. Now, no rhyme or reason. And I wanna add a little green to this. Now don't worry that you're covering up the gold. I have a trick when it dries. And there's no rhyme or reason to how much color I'm putting in here. Just whatever feels fun. And I'm using a short hair brush. If you notice, it's like a makeup brush that's real tight. I want it to get into those little crevices. And I don't want it to be perfectly even. I want it to be a little uneven. And if you notice, I'm making some of the colors overlap. Now I've got sort of a rainbow, kind of a messy rainbow, but I'm going to let this sit and dry. Now my piece is dry and I have just a baby wipe here. It's just a dried out one. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. You can also do this just with your finger. I find it just easier to do with a little bit of alcohol and a wipe. And I want to take off the paint just on that gold lace. And I don't need it perfectly taken off just enough that you see the gold through it and the colors sink in the back. You can also do it just with your finger if that's easier, it's just messier. And now when you look at it closer, you can see you have that beautiful stained glass of colors in the background and the gold in the front. And what do you do with a piece like this? So this is the piece that I've created using the same exact technique. Now you can see it when it's not mounted and when it's mounted how completely different it looks as a tassel piece and with the beads around it, how it really gets an elegance. Now here I have these beads that I've created the exact same way. I just sandwiched them together. So when you see it closer, you can see how you have just that gold doily and this shape totally changes it around that it has more of a Moroccan look. So it, it loses that doily effect, almost a stained glass type of a feel. And when you look at these beads, you can see that I've got them on both sides done the exact same way. There's one trick you have to do with this before you can continue to work with it. And that is, I cover it with matte resin. It's a UV resin, just the same as a shiny UV resin, but I prefer to buy the nail polish because it's the only ones. Here's another brand I've found also. You can get these off of eBay or from any beauty supply. And they work great because they will take this down to keeping it at this matte finish. So if you notice in this piece, it doesn't get any shinier. It does get a little bit paler from the resin, but I love the contrast of the resin, the matte resin with the beads. It really looks elegant. And here you can see it with the side beads. They're also covered in the matte. I think that the matte can be such an elegant contrast 
to the shine of the beads and the crystals that I really like the way that looks. You can put this on before you outline it with the gold or you can do it after. It doesn't really make a difference. Either way, it'll look like the natural clay. It'll just keep that paint in there so you don't have to worry about it coming off. You can also use a regular varnish. I do find that I have not found a matte varnish that really stays matte. They all seem to have a little bit of a shine to them when they dry where this stays very matte. And here's another technique. This is black clay, and then I put the black lace on top. You can see exactly how I cut it out there. And I just put these little pieces around it. Now, these little tiny pieces can almost look like steampunk cogs, too. So if you're do into steampunk, this doesn't just have to be like a lace doily piece. You can use them as a cog type of a look. Now, for this one, I'm going to take a little of Tiny Pandora's Super Matte Sealer. Any water-based varnish will do the same thing. And I'm just going to take a dab of that with my brush. And then I have some mica powder. This is the Lumiere Lusters, and I think it's Raspberry Punch. Any kind of mica powder will do this. And I'm just adding the mica powder to the varnish. And you don't need much. You only need a dot of varnish and a dot of mica powder, so don't feel like... You need a whole lot to do this. And if you don't have mica powder, use eyeshadow. Now there's two ways you can do this. You could brush it on and then wipe it off so that you had the reverse effect. You can pat it on on the top and just highlight the top. I like to fill it in with the mica powder. And you could mix colors up with your mica powder on this. Now I'll let this sit for a few minutes, just like my other piece. And I'll paint this other one the exact same color so I'll have a pair of earrings. Now, if this is not enough of a contrast for you, sometimes you want a, a brighter or a deeper contrast. You could add gold or silver on top of this. I like this kind of a rose color that it's coming up as, and it will become more metallic-y as it dries. Now, to add a design to the back of my piece, it's very simple. I'm just going to take a little water bottle, and you can use this also as a stamp, so you don't have to just use this as a mold. And I'm just going to press down on this, not too hard that I stretch the clay, just enough to give a little impression to finish it off. And there you go, you can see I have that impression beautifully done on the back also. And here you can see adding some UV resin on top of just that single color of mica, how it just adds a whole nother effect to it. Now the one thing that I thought was really cool about this mold is it's basically a rubber stamp also. So if you just spritz it with water, which is all I'm doing, and I kind of overwater it just because I think it's easier, and then spritz it again so your fingers don't stick to it, and then do as I call the kitty cat method. Now you can do this with the stamp on top and flipped over into the clay or on the bottom, whichever way makes you happy. That's the best way. There's no rhyme or reason or rules to this. And you get a great impression this way. Now this is a thicker piece. I did this on the thickest setting of my pasta machine just so I had a chunky piece of clay. But with the white, you can see I had a little bit of color from those little pieces that were in there that I've baked before. But if I put some mica powder or paint over this, you won't see it at all. Now the other thing I like to do with a piece like this is I'll cut it out and I'll add some little textures to it. You know, little balls and dashes and just change it up so this one looks much different from this one, yet this is the same thing. Now, what you're gonna find is that all these little designs give you something to follow so you know exactly where to add and it's all evenly laid out for you, which is really neat. And you can also do different flowers and other things and just use that as a background type of a stamp. So let me show you what I've done with this. Now here is how I used those little textured circles and I made larger ones and smaller ones and put them all together in a necklace. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. And you can see that this once again is that doily that I did. I did the, the acrylic paint on top for that watercolor look with the matte UV resin and I just did it in different little circles. So, and you can see you get these beautiful textured little pieces that add so much interest and detail and all it has is just that little stamp of the doily on the back and I followed that as a design pattern. So you can create all sorts of different things with these. 
here instead of cutting out a circle I cut out triangles and then I just did the colored wash the same as I did on the other piece and put the matte gel nail polish on top which is resin that's matte. You can see with the matte how it just gives such a nice contrast to it and it gives a watercolor kind of a textured look so it's not technically that lace look anymore it's more like a layered look with different designs on now, it. You can do that same stamp impression, which I did here. And what I did was I put some mica powder on top. This was the, the Jet Age Studio pigments, and this one was the One Love pigment. And it's kind of like a pink with a green to it. And it's actually over a greenish clay. So when I move it to a suit, you can see at a certain angle, it starts to turn like a green to it. It's very interesting underneath the resin. I really like the way this looks. It's got a really neat look to it. And of course, the crystals and the beads really zip it up. Now this is, of course, the shiny resin, the normal resin that we all use. I lied. I took two of the large ones and the medium one, and I just used that in a, with three different cutters, a large, a medium, and a small cutter. And I just put some little leaf sprays on top of them and once again just use the acrylic paint with the water put the matte resin on it because I didn't want it to shine I wanted it to be dull I like this contrast with the beads I really think it's kind of an interesting look you've got the sparkle here with all these crystals and these other beads that I've created using my shiny varnish but this nice contrast gives it such a rich and unique look just to see the detail. And you can see how just putting that acrylic paint with some water on top really gives it that beautiful watercolor shadowy look. Now here I've just used a Skinner blend in the back and I've just used the gold pieces. So you can use those graduating as you go also along. I found it was nicer to keep my little pieces in a solid color and use the multicolor clay behind it because I have more control. But you can see how you can make some simple post earrings with just a little piece of a Skinner blend. And I just outlined it with some gold clay and put the gold stamp on the back so that it matched it just for fun. And here I have a pair of earrings that are just done with the white lace, but they almost have a steampunk kind of a cogish look to them. When I bring them closer, you can see the pearl. I've put some resin on top of it so it's all solid. And I outlined it just in black crystals and black beads, but it gave a really interesting black and white look. I very rarely work in black and white. I struggle with this, believe it or not. But it, they came out really, really pretty. And you still see that little bit of pearl in the clay inside the resin. And here's another piece that I've just stamped it in. This is, I just wanted to show you the beading, all crystals and stuff, and I did use the shiny UV resin on this. And it almost has a steampunk look once again. I have stamped in the background that round, large, doily kind of a look. And then I've taken the smaller gold pieces and put them in and put the UV resin on top. And that gave it very interesting steampunky kind of funky look. I really liked this piece a lot. It was very interesting after I did it and I used the Jet Age Studio again on this one. You can use any mica powder. This was the one I used. Most of you want to know which one. It was the Bora Bora. So it's got like a bluish greenish as it moves look to it from just stamping it. And this was just some scrap clay I had that was some brownish gray. You can see what a beautiful effects you can get using this either way. So I just tried to use different colors just to show you how you can use up all these little bits and pieces. I don't like to leave these around my studio. They have a tendency to get lost or broken, so I prefer to use them up on little magnets. And they're really nice, just a little magnetic back. You can find these at any of the hardware stores. Even eBay has these little magnetic pieces that you can order and then just glue them on after they're baked. So they're just a fun little way to use up any little pieces you have left, any way you want to decorate them, just a little scrap of clay. This is some gold ones I had left over and some blue ones. Just by changing up the colors around, you can see how you can create something totally different. But they're a fun little thing and they're only like an inch big. So they're a perfect little gift. They're cute on somebody's refrigerator or file cabinet. And 
What's nice about them with a tin is you can just put them right inside. You can give them perfectly as a gift like that and they open up and they're nice and perfect. Just a cute little fun idea, something a little different than beads every time. So I hope I gave you lots of ideas and inspiration and thanks for watching.